In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the hand-drawn Photoshop action. So I'm going to take this photo here, play the action, and it's going to recreate this uh, really detailed sort of hand-drawn sketch effect. Uh, and so how the action works is that you firstly, you just brush over the areas of your photo that you want to remain um, in detail, to have a lot of detail. And every everything else outside of that brushed area is going to be given like a light sketched um, outline. So if I flick back to here, um, you can see that you know the area that I've brushed up here and through here, um, the subject remains um, heavily detailed. And anywhere outside, you can see that it applies uh, like an outline, um, much looser sort of sketch uh, sketch look. So. Uh, I'll just go through a few more examples of the effects. So uh, this guy here, uh, I brushed over those areas. They're the areas that I wanted to remain um, detailed. Play the action, and that's what I got. So you can see how the detail sort of tapers off here and goes into an outline, uh, and the feet here as well. And so one thing you'll notice um, with these examples, uh, the areas that I've brushed, I've made sure that uh, the edges are softened. So I'll explain to you how I do that um, when I set up the example. Uh, it's fairly simple. Right, that's it. I'll close that down, hide this, and uh, let's get into it. So I have my photo here, and there's just a few things we need to go through just to make sure your uh, Photoshop file is set up correctly so you don't run into any errors. So firstly, look into your layer panel and make sure that your photo is correctly set as a background. So 99% of the time when you open up a photo, it should look identical to this, but if it doesn't, um, just follow these steps. So Let's pretend I've opened up this photo and it's called layer one. So what you need to do is go to layer, new, background from layer, and that just sets it correctly as the background. So still in the layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon. Uh, it's cut off on my screen, but click on that, scroll down to panel options, and right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked, click OK. Next, go to image mode. Make sure your photo is in RGB color mode at eight bits a channel. All right, uh, next, go to, again, image, uh, image size. Uh, as always, make sure you're working with a high resolution photo. You can see mine's 3100 pixels by 3100. Uh, I found with testing this action, the best results sort of came from around 1500 all the way up to 4500 pixels. So try to work within that range. Cancel that. Okay, so what I need to do now is uh, I'll load up the actions panel. So go to window uh, actions. It'll pop up to the side here. Uh, click on this top right hand corner icon and go to load actions. Select hand drawn .atn and it will just pop up here. Now I need to load the brushes that were included with the download. It's very important. So if I, if I just hit B, okay, or uh, click on the brush tool over here, and then right click anywhere over the canvas, okay, you'll bring up the brushes. So just go to this, uh, this icon here to the side, and you can either click on load brushes or replace brushes. I'll just click on replace, and select hand drawn brushes.abr, and these are the brushes here. Okay, so that's all done. I'm just going to hide this for the moment. So what I need to do now is basically create uh, the selection around my photo, uh, and that's going to be the area that remains heavily detailed, and um, everything else around it is going to be turned into a light 
um, sketch. So there's a few ways you can do this. Um, first of what we need to do is create a new layer. Okay, so go layer, new layer, and it must be called brush or lowercase. The action won't work at all if it's not called brush. Click OK. So basically you want to have this layer selected when you're brushing over your photo. So there's a couple ways I can do that. I can just hit B, okay, get my brush out. I'll right click. I always include a soft brush with any action that includes brushes. I'll always include um, a soft brush just to quickly access. So, um, and you can use any color to brush over your photo, it doesn't matter. So I can just, you know, make sure I have the brush layer selected and just brush over my photo like that. Okay. And you can adjust the brush, brush size just by hitting the left and right square brackets. So I'm just going around and um, changing the brush size. Okay, so that's pretty much set to go. Uh, but I'll show you another way to um, quickly outline uh, your subject. So if I, I'll just delete the brush light. If I just hit L, on the keyboard, that's the lasso tool, you can get it over here, okay, and I can just draw um, a pretty rough shape around uh, the edges of the subject, and I'll cut it off here, um, just like that, so you can see I've got my selection, I want to actually remove, you can see these gaps um, between the bag handles, I want to get rid of that, so I'm just going to get my one tool, hit W, Okay, and if I hold down Alt um, while I've got the one tool out, it's going to subtract from that selection. So I can just click in these little gaps here uh, just to remove that from the selection. Okay, that'll do. So I need to create my brush layer again. So go to Layer, New Layer, Brush. Now I need to fill this selection with a color. So a quick way to fill uh, a selection with a color is um, with a foreground color here is to just hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete. Hit that and there you go. Uh, Deselect. That. Okay. So there is my um, brushed area. So like I said, I don't want uh, the best results come when you don't use any hard edges. So you can see this is all hard edges. So uh, what I want to do is to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and uh, I'll just blur that out about that much. Okay, uh, I might just brush over her eye a little bit more. So I'm just going to hit B, and I'm just going to get in here and brush there because I want that part to be um, quite detailed. Just like that. Okay, and another thing I like to do um, to soften up the edges even more. If I hit E, it's just going to get the eraser tool out. I'll use quite a large brush. And I'll just like click on the edges here, and you can see it creates a really nice sort of gradient. Um, so that'll help achieve a better result as well. Okay, uh, another thing to check off before you run the action, if you just hit B on the keyboard again uh, to get the brush tool out, always make sure that the brush opacity is at 100%. Any actions uh, that you've downloaded of mine that include brushes, always make sure it's at 100% before playing the action. So I'll just get the uh, actions panel open again. Okay, and another good habit habit to get into before running the action is to go to edit, purge all. That'll just clear out any history banked up in your Photoshop. Okay, so this is ready to go. I'll just twirl that open. So I, uh, when I click play, I can see the scroll bar going down. Let's me know how much time there is to go left. But it'll take about, um, depending on the speed of your computer, about a minute to two minutes. So I'm just gonna uh, click play and I'll fast forward the video to the result and we'll go from there. Okay, the action's finished playing back and you can see uh, the result that it's created. So I'll just collapse the uh, actions panel and we'll go into the layer panel now. So uh, as always with any one of my actions, when the uh, action is finished playing, what you want to do is collapse all the folders that are open. So to do that, uh, just hold down uh, Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac and click on the hand drawn uh, folder arrow here. And that just, uh, yeah, that collapses everything. So from the top here, I've just left the brush layer on. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to run the action again, say if I, um, you know, I got to the result and I'm thinking that I want a bit more detail down here, I can just, I would just delete that hand drawn folder. Select my brush layer, hit B, grab brush tool, and you know I could just brush on more down here, like that, and then play the action again. 
Okay, so I'll just undo that. Alright, so I'll just go from the top here. So, uh, zoom in a bit. So this top layer here, overall sharpening, uh, basically, or if I turn it on and off, you can see how it just sort of brings out the details a little bit more, okay? Uh, it gives it more of a, much more of a grainy texture, like it has been drawn with a pencil. So, and just check out the opacity of this layer here, it's at 20%. Any layer here that I've got um, in the layer panel here with, um, in brackets, opacity, I'm basically telling you to experiment with that layer um, through the opacity, okay? So, you know, if I crank this to 100%, it's going to be way too much, but depending on your photo, you might like it. Um, zero, okay, you might prefer that, but just by default, I've just set it at around 20%. Okay, overall contrast, I'll just zoom out again. Again, in brackets opacity, it's at 10%. So if I turn this all out to 100, okay, you can see the look it's created there. There's 0, 100. So I'll start at 0, and I'm slowly um, dragging to the right here, increasing the opacity, uh, and you know around 38% suits this photo, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, overall color saturation, I'll come back to that. Uh, that comes into play when we add color back into our subject. This layer here, highlight pencil strokes, opacity. Uh, by default, when the action's finished, this effect is gonna be quite uh, opaque. You can see, we can barely see as I turn it on and off um, there what that's doing. Basically, it'll apply some white colored pencil strokes to the highlights of your photo. Okay, and depending on your photo, how bright it is, how dark it is, this effect will be more prominent. Okay, but if you want it to be um, even more prominent, so if I just open up the example here, you can see like down around so you can see those white strokes, so I want to bring them out a bit more. Okay, now I might just turn in the overall sharpening. Um, if I just select that layer, and if I, if I just hit one on the keyboard, that'll change the opacity to 10. So you can see there, if I just hit different numbers, it's just changing the opacity. So let's change that to one. Uh, where was I here? So if I crank the opacity of this layer to 100%, you can see those white lines come out a lot more. Um, just by default, I didn't want the action to finish um, with the opacity at 100% because if, you, if your image is um, predominantly white, there's gonna be white strokes everywhere and it might not look right. So I prefer you control that layer uh, by yourself through the opacity. And um, you see this mask, <coughs> excuse me, this mask, if I hold down Alt or Option and click on it to go inside, I've restricted it to only appear uh, these white lines in the highlights of your photo. Okay? If I hold down Shift and click on the mask, that'll temporarily um, disable the mask, and you can see how they're now the white lines sort of um, extrude out from the highlights of your photo. So what I like to do basically is, um, I like to control where those white lines appear, so I'll turn it to 100%. And I'll just fill this um, mask with black. So I'll make black my active color. Alt delete or option delete, fill that black. I hit B, get my brush out, um, change this to white. You can hit X to chop and change between the foreground and background color. So now I can just brush on, you know, where I want those um, white strokes. Okay. Now the blend mode at this layer is set to overlay. Um, if you want them to appear more prominent, you could, well, you could just duplicate layer, Control or Command J, okay? So now you've basically just stacked those lines on top of each other. Or you could set the blend mode to say normal, and that'll make it pop out a little bit more. Okay, but generally I just duplicate the layer like that, and then I'll play around with the passive. You go to zero, and I'll just bring it up a little bit. You know, something like that, 20%. Okay. Uh, let's go down. So this one here, subject highlights, opacity. I'll just turn these top two layers off for a sec. Okay. So this layer here, again, it's got a very subtle opacity by default. And if I turn this up to 100%, so what it is, um, it looks for the highlights in your photo and applies um, kind of like a white fill. It's got a bit of a texture to it as well. And so what you want to do here is just, you know, start off at 0% opacity and just slowly drag to the right. And you see it starts to add a little bit of color a little bit of white into the highlights. Um, I think it just helps with the, uh, just the look of the effect. So I'll just apply a little bit there. 
I'll turn those back on. Uh, I might just knock this down to one, uh, ten percent. Sorry. All right. Now, overall color. Uh, just zoom out again. Very simple to use. All you need to do is double click on this box, and then you can just change the color of the background. Okay. I found for the best results, you want to use lighter color backgrounds. It'll still work with you know with strong bold colors like this. Okay. Uh, but. Yeah, I just found the best results go for lighter colors. Um, if you want black and white, just you know drag this to the corner. Okay, simple as that. Now, subject brightness contrast is one you want to play around with. Okay, so you just double click on this box here, and basically it's an exposure adjustment layer. So if you just play around with the gamma correction here, if you drag this to the right, it's going to increase uh, the darkness of your photo. So you can see out there. I just found that using the exposure adjustment layer versus levels adjustment layer sort of interacted um, with the pixels, with the effect of that pencil look much uh, much better. So yeah, you want to play around with that. If it's if you feel your image is too light, just drag that to the right. And uh, if you want to blow out the highlights a bit more, drag the exposure to the right. Okay, just like that. When you drag it to the left to um, make it a bit darker again. So I try to find a level that's good across uh, most photos, but you want to yeah play around with these. Okay, uh, moving down, we have this one here called vignette. I've got brackets opacity again, so that just basically adds uh, a vignette around the edges of your canvas. Okay, if you don't want it, turn it off. Uh, if you want it more prominent, turn up the opacity. Okay, so if you want to add uh, color back into your photo, just tick this layer on. Okay, and you can see it's instantly applied color back into our subject. Uh, if there was, you know, a, a background image as well, it would have applied color there. Uh, I've got in brackets here, change blend mode. I'll just zoom in a bit here. So, and also check out the opacity. Currently it's at 40%. So if I turn it out to 100, yeah, bring back, that brings back a lot of the color. Um, but I've just left it as a subtle a subtle amount. Now, I like changing the blend mode of this layer to say uh, overlay or soft light. Okay, so there's overlay, you play around with the, um, the opacity there. Okay, it's soft light, it's not, a, not as intense as overlay. See that there? And so where the overall color saturation layer comes into play is if you want to um, apply, say, what I've done here, soft light, and you think you want more such color, color um, in your subject, you can go to overall color saturation, double click on that, and then turn up the saturation handle here. And that's bring back a lot more color. Now, if you, uh, if you only want, you can see as I've boosted up the saturation there, um, where was it, that was it, that was normal, and I've turned it up, it's also boosts up the saturation in the background as well. If you only want it to um, apply it to your subject, uh, do this. So what I'm going to do is um, select the mask. I'm just going to hit Control or Command I to invert it. So now that layer is completely hidden. Okay, and I'll just hold down Control or Command. I'll click on the brush layer. So that's now created a selection around the area that we brushed. And I'll just select my mask here. I'll just make I'll just reset this and I'm, I basically want to fill that area with white. So to fill a selection with the background color, hold down Control Delete or Command Delete. And you can see now if I go inside the mask, it's filled that area with white. So now if I play around with the saturation, it's only going to affect that area. Alright. Um, I'll just hide that. Alright, so moving down, we have this folder here, I'll just turn uh, this off for a moment. We have this folder here called Texture Overlay. So if I flip that on and off, what, what it basically does, it applies a subtle texture over the entire design. Um, I'll just zoom in to this area so you can see what's going on. So that's the texture there. Uh, if you go inside this folder, we have the bump map. I'll turn that off. Turn it on, you can see uh, that just adds you know, a bumpy texture. 
over the design. It's at 59% opacity. If you want that more subtle, you know, I'll just turn that down to 30. I'll just hit 3 on the keyboard. Okay, much more subtle. Uh, there's a couple more layers there that which help build the texture. This layer here, I'll zoom out. Enhanced shadow detail. If I flip this on and off, so what it basically does, it enhances the shadows. So um, I'll turn up the opacity to 100% and zero so you can see what's going on. So if you really want to exag exaggerate the shadows a bit more, play around with the opacity of this layer. It works nice with this photo because there's a lot of sort of detail through these uh, the handles of the bag. So I'll turn that up a bit more. Okay, this folder here, subject sketch, if I turn that off, okay, you can see that's basically um, the area that we brushed, okay, and it's filling it with all the detail, all that detail there, and so if we go inside here, there's a few different layers, so these top three, if I turn them off, uh, basically that's just adding some, you know, some sketchy lines over the subject. Uh, you can play around with the opacity of each one of these. This one's at 70%, 50, and 100. Okay. Uh, if I turn that off, you can see that each layer will affect it in a different way. All right. Uh, main subject visibility. If I turn this off, you can see that's basically our main. Uh, that's our subject. So if we go inside here, uh, these two layers here just add a, a subtle texture over our subject like that. Um, I like to play around with this one in conjunction with the subject brightness, that exposure layer I talked about. So if you just double click on this, play around with this bottom handle here, you can adjust the brightness of your subject this way as well. Um, I like this one a bit darker. Like that. And there's your main photo. So if I turn it off, um, you can see that there. Okay. Oh, so there's a couple more I forgot to cut down the bottom here. So these three here, if I turn them off, these three layers help create the blends between the area that you brushed and uh, the more sort of the outlined sketch, sketched look. So you can see at the top of her head here how there's a clear gap between, you know, um, the area that I brushed and the outline. But these three layers here, if I turn them back on, they sort of fill that area with some jagged, you know, sketchy lines to help create a nice blend between that area. So again, play around with the opacity. Uh, this line here, the visibility, you can play around uh, the gamma correction. If I drag this to the right, it should make them quite, you can see those, those sketchy lines start to intercept um, over the entire subject, you can see that there. So that's, that's a pretty cool look on its own, so you can play around with that. Uh, we'll turn that back down. Background sketch. So this folder is basically the outlines folder for anything else in the background. So if you just wanted to apply this effect to your brushed area and nothing else, turn off the background sketch folder. Okay, but uh, I reckon most of the time you want it on. Now, if I go inside here, got a few different layers. This grit texture, if I turn that on and off, you can see that there. Just apply some sort of random texture. Um, makes it look a little bit messy, which is what I wanted. So um, you can play around, again, with the darkness of that, through the gamma correction. The main one you want to play around with here is strong outlines. This is basically, uh, yeah, the main outline layer. So what you want to do, again, play around with this exposure adjustment layer. If I wanted these to be much darker, um, I'll just drag this gamma correction handle up. I'll just zoom out a bit. So I'll drag it down and up. See that there? So it's really going to depend um, on your photo and what you're trying to achieve. Now, what I'd like to do with the exposure handle here, if I just turn this gamma correction up, if I start dragging up this exposure handle, you'll see that it starts to eat into um, 
the the outlines, but it's only going to attack areas that are quite thin at first. So you can see as I drag that up, um, the areas that are remaining are, are the more dense areas. So you can see that, that area there, that area there. As I drag that back, it starts to bring it all back on. If I drag it to the right, it starts to eat in. So that's actually a cool one to play around with. So, okay. Um, but for this, I'll just leave that about there. Uh, angular outlines, again, brackets opacity. If I turn this up to 100%, you can see that it goes around um, everything with more sort of straight lines. If I hide this layer here, okay, so you can see that a bit better now. Okay, so if you want straighter lines, crank up the opacity of that, okay? If you want to blend between the two, just leave those two on. Uh, but the opacity of this was pretty low, so just keep that in mind. Large wavy lines, okay? You can see those there, really subtle around the edges there. Okay, I'll turn the opacity of that up to 100. So you can see, you can see those there. Um, don't forget you can move these layers around as well. And every time you run the action, um, you're going to get a completely different variation of all these pencil strokes. So it's going to be randomized every time. Okay, I'll just turn the cursor that back down. Might play around with, might turn down the gamma correction, oh, sorry, the, yeah, gamma correction a little bit here. Okay, I'm just going to flip this, um, check out the before and after, see where we're at. So looking pretty cool. Okay, so down the bottom here, uh, background color you really don't need to play around with. It's more of just a, a backing plate for everything else. So uh, I probably should have called it some something else, but you don't you don't really want to play around with the background color here. You can if you want. Um, it'll apply basically a color um, to everywhere but your subject. I just found it's best to control the color through the overall color layer here. Uh, okay, so what I want to do now is say if I wanted an additional background texture in the background, say if I you know, had a nice paper texture or watercolor texture, I can apply it to the background. I'll show you how to do that. So if you just select the background color layer and go to File, Place Embedded, I've just got a texture here. I'll put a few links down in the description below to some, some free textures which you can download. Uh, so let's double click on this, and I need to zoom out a bit here, I'm going to fill my entire design with this texture, hit enter, um, control or command zero to fit um, your canvas to screen, so I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now, uh, at the moment it doesn't look right at all, so what I'm going to do is change, <coughs> excuse me, change the blend mode from normal to luminosity. Basically that's going to remove all the color, so all I'm left with is the texture. And I'm just going to turn down the opacity. So I'm going to go back to zero. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. So you can see that texture is now starting to come into the background. So it's just added a whole heap of nice um, subtle texture in the background. Just helps with the overall sort of realism of the result. Uh, now, what's next? So what we can do is apply some text. So if I just hit T to get the type tool out, um, I've got this font here called Anemone Regular. I'll put a link to that below. And uh, I'm just going to type out and drawn. I'm just going to change this to white. Whoops, what happened there? I, don't know, I want to drag this um, this text right to the top and Control T to scale that up. Okay, something like that. Now, uh, what you can do here with the text, if you wanted to have the text interact with the texture um, of all like the sketchy lines below, um, a little cool technique that I um, I was playing around with you. If you just double click on this, on uh, this text layer, all right, 
Um, and look at this underlying slider here. Basically, if you hold down Alt or Option and click on this arrow here and start dragging to the right, the text will start interacting uh, yeah, with the texture below. Uh, but it will only interact with the texture within that color range. So you can see um, the areas of the font that are, oh sorry, the areas of our design below that are white or brighter color, it won't subtract from the text. But the darker areas, because we're looking at this color range, it starts to remove, um, it starts to remove that from the text. So if I continue to drag this to the right, you see how it's starting to remove, it's starting to blend the entire font into the background because that's the color range we're telling it to blend with. Okay. So the same with um, the white. If I just start dragging this to the left, you'll see the brighter areas of our design um, will interact with the text. So I just found that alter option, click on that, start drawing to the right and start to get some cool texture come over the text. What I might also do is add a outer glow, okay, and change that to multiple, and, whoops, where was I, outer glow, change that to multiple and change the color to black. So what you'll have then is a black um, outer glow. I think by default, Photoshop applies like a, a yellowish tone. So uh, you play around with the opacity. Just have this really subtle. Um, you got the size. Okay, I'll click OK. And that's looking pretty sweet. I'm just going to play around this overall sharpening. Just turn up the opacity a little bit. Okay. Um, and something else you can do with the texture. If I want this to be, you know, a bit more prominent, but it's making everything a bit too dark, what you can do is just apply a curve adjustment layer. Okay. Hold down Alt or Option between the two layers here, and you'll see that white box with the arrow come up. Click on that, so it'll clip it, so this layer here only affects this layer below. So I'm just gonna drag this middle handle up, and that's basically just going to um, boost the brightness, I'll add a bit of contrast, like that, so you can see before and after. Okay. Um, you now and lastly, if you wanna play around with some additional colors, create uh, create a curves adjustment layer right at the top. Okay, then jump into these red, green, and blue channels and play around with these handles here. So, uh, you know, I could add a bit of green into the shadows there. Into my blue channel. Okay, I'll just lower the opacity of this Okay, so you can see now I've just added a subtle, you know, a little bit of color. And I think we'll leave it at there. So I'll just, I'll just flick it between that and the, uh, the before and after. All right, so that's it. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, just send me a message. But yeah, if not, have fun using the effect. Thanks.